All right, so the idea is in this remote learning world, you're not even in the same room with your students. How do we create an environment where the students are able to collaborate with one another and work together on a common whiteboard? And that is where, uh, let's see, that is exactly where Jamboard comes in. Jamboard is an amazing product from Google. It's free, It's you can easily download it for your iPad, that's what I've done here. Uh, but it is also um, on your Google Drive, in your Google Drive. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna walk you through the process of uh, using Jamboard to create a kind of a, a problem that your students would work on together, all right? So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. I'm in my Google Drive. Uh, I prefer to set up the Jamboard um, with uh, on my Google Drive on my on my computer my desktop uh, it thinks setting things up on my iPad is a little tricky so uh, what I do is I go to new and you notice what I did right there new and I go down to more I click on Google Jamboard do I want to create it in this shared folder yes and you get what uh, looks like a just a typical Google product in the upper left hand corner I'm going to name it AAA so it goes to the top of my list. Uh, but anyway, so it's, uh, oh, let's do um, pair up demo. So we're going to have our students pair up and work collaboratively on this Jamboard. So there it is. Uh, now I've got my blank thing, uh, blank canvas right here. Uh, um, let's grab a problem. So, oh, let's say... Uh, Here's the problem we want. So I'm going to screenshot it. I just kind of grabbed a problem from the internet somewhere. I don't need that. And that's going to show up on my desktop way over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click that image button and I can simply drag the image onto uh, that thingy thing <laughs> and onto Canvas. I mean, onto Jamboard. Now I'm kind of wondering what would happen if I just dragged it directly into uh, Jamboard? Nothing, you noticing? When I just try and drag it on, nothing happens. So what I need to do is open that, click that insert image button and then drag it there. And there it is. There's the, there's the problem I want my students to work on. So I'm gonna kind of put it Oh, let's put it right here. And what I'm also going to do, because I want all my groups to work on this, so I'm going to create, oh, let's do a, a text box. And I'll put names of students right here. And that's going to tell my students that I want them to change their, uh, put, the, put their names right there. And then, oh, let's do a sticky note. And I'll call this group one. All right, and I am now officially ready, all right? But right now, that's one slide. Uh, up here, you'll notice I only have one slide, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate it and duplicate it and duplicate it. And oh, let's just do four for right now because you'll get the idea. But right now, the problem is they are all named the exact same thing. I mean, every slide is the exact same thing. But you'll notice I'm now on slide four, I'm now on slide three, I'm back on slide four. So what I'm gonna do here on slide four is I'm gonna change that. That's no longer group one, that is now group four because they are on slide four. Then I'm gonna to go to slide three and change group one to now group three because they're on slide three. And now let's just continue that, I'm just about done. And there we go. So now we have group one on slide one, group two on slide two, there we go. And then what I wanna do is I wanna make sure I share it. So I click in that upper right hand corner, the blue button, and I make it so that anyone with the link, now what I would probably do, since I'm gonna be working with students in my own domain, I'd probably change it to my own domain. But for right now, for the, well, I'll do it. I'll just simulate that I am only working with students in my own domain. That's probably what you would want to do as well. So that only students inside your own school district can access this file. But I do need to change from viewer to editor. And I'm going to copy that link. And that link that I just copied right, well, let's go back to here. 
That link right there that I just copied is the link I'm going to share with my students either in uh, Google uh, Meet or in Zoom, whatever is my tool for having students joining together in a synchronous experience. That's where I'm going to share it. So I, I am using Zoom, so I would then put it in the chat box for Zoom. All my students are going to click on that. And I'm then going to send them to their breakout rooms. Whatever random breakout room they go to indicates which slide they're going to work on. If they're in breakout room three, they are going to edit slide. Oops, right here. Come on, baby, right there. All right, if they go to breakout room three, then they are group three and they will work on slide three. If they are breakout room two, they would, oops, there it is, they would work on group two, on slide two, which is group two. Of course, the kids would fill in their names and that's it. Now, the what's really kind of cool, the secret sauce is a big concern. Well, what, what do we do if the kids are all in their breakout rooms and I can't observe them and I can't monitor them? Well, in a way, you kind of can. Because when you click on that, that link, uh, that expand the frame bar, you can see all of the working that is happening all at the exact same time. And so it's really easy to see which slide and consequently which breakout room is being productive and which breakout room seems to be having some sort of difficulty getting started. Maybe it's more often than not, it's a technological problem. They can't figure out which slide they're supposed to be on, or maybe they can't figure out how to use the tools for Jamboard, all right? And that is, that's the, that's how to use a Jamboard to create an interactive experience with your students. It is beautiful. Uh, just make that slide, uh, copy it as many times as you need, press the share button, put it in your chat box, and then let the students do the working. You can monitor them, remember, with that frame bar way up there. You can just monitor all the groups at once.